today is June 29th, and you know what that means. Tomorrow, the day this video comes out, will be the last day of June 2021. And you know what that means. The next day, July 1st, Walt Disney World is bringing fireworks back to Magic Kingdom and to Epcot. And you know what that also means is that on July 5th, Flower and Garden Festival ends here at Epcot. So you know what that means? Today I'm bringing you to Epcot here at Walt Disney World for one last visit to Epcot Flower and Garden Festival 2021 before it ends on July 5th. So, if you're ready, let's go. And I'm really happy that the weather seems to have cleared up today. We've got blue skies for the first time in like a week. Since all of these topiaries will be gone in just a few short days, I'm gonna show you some of my favorites today too. These from Fantasia. The main first topiary you see, Sorcerer Mickey with his brooms and buckets right here in front of the entrance also from Fantasia. Wow, a bright blue sky and a sunny day makes such a huge difference as to how these topiaries look. Glorious, glorious spaceship Earth. In my last Epcot video, someone asked if there were still construction walls all over Epcot. Yes, there are. They're kind of moving, but they're still there. So you can either go to the left to go to like the test track, mission space area, or you can go to the right to go to like the seas, the land, and all of that. Either way, you have to go around to get to the World Showcase. I think since I've been going to the left every time, today we are gonna go to the right. It's a typical summer in Florida. This June has felt more wet than usual, but when I look back on past photos and videos from past Junes, it's always this way. It's always just really, really wet and rainy and then really hot in between. So when it's been raining all week, I've been wishing for bright blue skies and sunshine, and I got it but that also means it is scorching hot today. So the first thing I'm gonna do is look for something cold to eat, drink, or do. I've mentioned this before so many times, but I love just looking at bodies of water and I feel like they always cool me down a little bit. Just, just looking at them, it's just mental, it's psychological. This Woody and Bo Peep topiary has been really popular. People love it. She's got her little sheep, her butterflies and the flowers. Also, I love hearing the old school Epcot music here. There are like blocks, it's it's just really pretty, really well done and in a really nice spot. Because Flower and Garden Festival's ending, that also means that the Goodness Garden Butterfly House will be going away, so let's pay it one more visit. This garden closes at dusk, so if you do wanna visit it and you're here before July 5th, make sure you get here while the sun's out. The flowers in here are intended to be a welcoming home for butterflies and they are just everywhere. There are also signs with information about butterflies and their life cycle. They're fluttering around. They're just everywhere. They move really quickly. You can just kind of stand in one spot and admire them. I said hi to the butterflies. I admire them. Now we're gonna move on. Of course, the super cute figment topiary here in front of the Imagination Pavilion has just been really popular. Great photo op. He's so cute. And they surrounded him with purple flowers. I'm going to start off as Citrus Blossom with an Isla Morada Beer Company Coconut Key Lime Ale, or Isla Morada, however you say it. Um, I'm from Miami. I've been going to the Keys my whole life. I've always said Isla Morada, but I did a video on it and a ton of people were telling me I was wrong. I don't remember if they were saying it's Isla or Isla, but I'm Hispanic, so we say Isla. You say whatever you want. But anyway, that Coconut Key Lime Ale is going away, so I'm going to have one. I also like their other options. I just really wanted to start with something cold. I'm already sweating up a storm, so this should hopefully be helpful. Cheers. so delicious. The coconut flavor is the most, the strongest flavor basically in this. I love coconut. I love anything coconut. I love coconut beer. I love coconut food. I love coconut desserts. I love plain coconut, even like coco frio, like drinking straight out of a coconut. Anything coconut, I'm coconuts for. And also you can get a six ounce or 12 ounce, I believe. So a smaller or a larger drink. And I usually get the smaller so that I can try like more smaller sizes rather than like fewer large ones, if that makes sense. Even though it got blue, the clouds started rolling in. This is pretty typical for summer afternoons. It looks like there's a gray line of clouds, but we'll just work around it. Just like the birds. As I was making my way into the World Showcase, the Princess Cavalcade started coming by, so we'll stop and say hi to them. You always gotta stop and say hi to princesses. It's only right, respectful. 
I still get excited for Disney princesses like I'm five years old, so I'm sure I'm not alone in that, right? They've been using the World Showcase building for every festival and it has its own special offerings. Disney also uses this building for special events of all sort. It's air conditioned and it's really pretty. They theme it for every festival. There's also this Disney horticulture display here talking about some of the interesting fun facts about Disney landscaping, plants, gardening. The flowers and plants here are part of the theming and that's just so cool. Here's some of the tools of the trade. We're gonna head inside now. I can already feel the cold air. It feels amazing. Also like sometimes it's full and sometimes it's just empty. It's so strange because the park isn't empty. But look at all this space. One thing I think that I haven't tried or if I did, I don't know. It's blended in and I don't remember is the barbecue seared pork tenderloin with summer succotash, herb butter, and grapefruit vinaigrette. So I think we're gonna try that. While I was purchasing my food, a storm of epic proportions began. I don't know if you can hear it, but it is thundering and lightning so hard that the entire building, like you could hear the like reverberations, it's like crazy noise. But so perfect time to be in here. It also means a wave, a flood of people came in. So I came in. Did you hear it? Yeah, it's wow. Okay, good thing. I got a table and a spot because I have a feeling more people are coming. What I have here is the barbecue seared pork tenderloin. This is the summer succotash and I believe they use ingredients from the land to make this succotash. I know they do at another location so I believe they do. And then there's a grapefruit vinaigrette, a little grape tomato there. And then the 81 Bay Brewing Company Watermelon Mint Wheat Ale. So let's try the uh, watermelon mint. Lovely like fresh summery combo of flavors. It's good, it's a little tart but it's good. I can smell the barbecue sauce. It's really beautifully presented too. Let's try it. Very soft and tender as I cut into it. That is quite delicious. I'm gonna say that's my favorite offering from the World Show Place. I don't think that I had tried it because I kind of was disappointed with the other offerings, but that was really delicious. It's really soft and like very tender and very like light. Now I'm gonna try the succotash. Mmm. That is really nice, it's really good. I wasn't super impressed with some of the other offerings here in the World Showplace and the other booths, like they just weren't to my taste. But this is actually genuinely really delicious, really good. There's uh, kids running around everywhere because the rainstorm started. Tons of people flooded in to escape the rain. So it's like a big party, it's fun, I love it. But yeah, this is my favorite World Showplace dish. It's a really nice balance of flavors, like Weirdly, the barbecue goes well with the succotash. I guess it has a grapefruit uh, vinaigrette, but it doesn't taste super tart. It's very, very light. I thought I liked this beer. I liked it last time. I don't really like it that much this time. It's really, really tart, like too tart for me. I'll still drink it, but I think I'm fine with it going away. But I, I do like that they have all the different offerings. Like I love variety, but yeah, it's, just like a little too tart this time. Occasionally a piano player will appear on stage and play wonderful, beautiful versions of Disney songs for us. Playing this beautiful Pocahontas song for us. I love how the stage is covered in sunflowers. It just completely changes the mood in here. Got some Little Mermaid beautifulness going on and I'm gonna head out into the day. I am gonna brave it. I don't know if it's raining or not. Because when you're in here, it's like a time warp. It is a jump to the left. It's just, it's the whole thing. You don't, like, the outside world doesn't exist when you're in here. So I don't know what's happening. We're gonna find out. Okay, it's not actively raining. Hey, I bet the plants like it though. Here in the UK, we've got Eeyore, Piglet, and Tigger, and then Pooh and Rabbit, and then the super popular Peter Pan and Hook topiaries. I remember when Peter Pan was on top of a building, like they kind of moved them into different spots. And because of the lighting right now, the gray sky, they're dripping with water and they kind of look like silhouettes, but it's kind of cool. There's something really soothing to me about flowers blowing in the wind and seeing the water drip off of them and like a few flower petals, just knowing that they're refreshed. They just had a delicious drink of rain. 
and it's still thundering and like windy. Kind of feels nice. It also looks like the Skyliner just kind of stopped there on its uh, wire. And I think that that happens also because of the weather, particularly lightning. Hopefully they get moving soon. I'm here in the France Pavilion now. I'm going to walk over to the Ratatouille area. The walkway in the area is open even though the ride has not yet opened and it's scheduled to open on October 1st, 2021. Just since we're kind of doing a flower and garden topiary food and drinks tour, might as well show you Remy. His whiskers have little droplets of water on them. He's so cute. France actually not only has Ratatouille, but also has the Beast and Belle. Beautiful topiary. Look at all the detail in these. Like, they're just gorgeous. And everybody loves the France fountain. It's a perfect place to sit down with a delicious food or drink and chill. And maybe even get your butt a little bit wet, but you know, hey, it's hot. It's fine. The Morocco Pavilion is still closed off to guests. I do see one area open though. Guests are coming in and out through the side here, so I guess part of it's at least open. Okay, so you can walk back here. And the Brass Bazaar is open. So some of it's open. It's partially open as of now. You can also go inside the Fez house here. As you know, each country in the World Showcase has a museum, but the Morocco Museum is behind these planters. It's not open right now. Looks like a lot of construction going on back there. Big changes taking place here in Morocco. But at least it's partially open. There's areas you can walk through and there is a store open back there. So it's, it's getting there. By the way, I will continue on my Epcot series focusing on each of the 11 World Showcase Country Pavilions. I'm just doing like maybe one a month. But I did skip June, didn't I? Yes, I did skip June. So I'll need to do two in July, at least one in July, but possibly two to make up for the one I skipped in June because if I do one a month, it should take about a year to do the series. Mixed in with other videos, of course, because I can't just do 11 of the same type of video in a row. I did already do the Japan Pavilion though, so if you haven't seen that video, you can find it on my channel. Also, there are these blinking lights on there. I think it's because of lightning. I think actually this thing on top, even though it is also symbolic, is also for weather. Not sure what's happening with the Hanami booth, the Japan Festival booth, but it's all closed off right now, maybe just because of the weather. Of course, I must show you the epic dragon topiary here in front of the Tori Gate. It's so beautiful, it's so large, and it's a pretty perfect photo op, especially if you can get Spaceship Earth right there. Look at that. That's nice. So now, of course, we've also got all of these barges in the water, these platforms, and those are for Harmonious, the new nighttime show. And it's finally been announced that that will debut on October 1st, along with the anniversary events here at Walt Disney World. So that means that on July 1st, when fireworks return to Epcot, it's not going to be Harmonious. It's going to be a sort of modified version of Epcot Forever, the show that was on before the parks closed in March of 2020. Check out the blinking lights, though. They're green, red, all sorts of different colors. What's that all about? Interesting. Is that like for Epcot Forever? Ooh, maybe. The Snow White and Dopey Topiary here is in such a weird spot this year. They put it in front of restrooms, so I haven't spent a lot of time photographing it and filming it because I don't want to do that in front of restrooms, even though I love Snow White, and this topiary's been in a better spot in previous years. It was by the water and just I hope it goes back there because Snow White deserves better. Anywho, here are the miniature gardens. These are really beautiful, intricate pieces of living art. That's part of Flower and Garden Festival too. Ooh, I just saw some really intense lightning in the sky. I always get excited for the sunset here over the World Showcase Lagoon. Even when it's cloudy like this, you can see these like breaks in the clouds with the sunset just peeking through and hopefully it just gets even more and more beautiful throughout the evening. The Lotus House Garden Kitchen has a lot of good options and there's usually a very long line for a reason. I think I'm gonna get the crab and cheese wontons and that delicious bubble tea that I love so much. This is so yummy. It's very, very muggy and rainy out, very hot and humid, so I feel like just a wet, soggy human being, but this milk tea cools you off. It's weird because you would think milk, milk tea, how does that cool you off? I don't know, it just does and it has boba in it. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. 
delicious. And the crab and cheese wontons are so good. They're just so good. Mmm, 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 mmm. Delicious. They're in this delicious, like, sweet and sour honey sauce. And they just taste so delicious. The cheese is so delectable. It's crispy to, like, perfection. This is... This is a delicious, delicious, tasty treat. Well, that was delicious, and it's always so relaxing, and I don't know, just chill and nice to hang out in the China Pavilion. I think that it's it's really close to being fully open. We're just still missing Nine Dragons, but Disney is announcing a slew of restaurant reopenings. Even today they're announcing more. So I have high hopes the days of seeing these signs on Disney World restaurants are coming to a close and soon they'll all be reopened hopefully. One thing you'll want to note about Epcot festival food is that the portion sizes are really small. So it may seem like, well, I've eaten five or six things. Why am I still hungry? Well, that's because each of those five or six things was like three to five bites of food. They're meant to be sampler size items so that you can try various delicacies from the different world country showcase pavilions and also the booths in the front that aren't associated necessarily with any country. They may just be like a Florida thing, a citrus thing, whatever the case may be. My point is, is that they are small portions. The drinks as well, like I showed you, you can choose a six or a 12 ounce for many of the drinks and a six ounce is like half of a regular drink. So you can actually try more things, smaller sizes, and just get a lot of variety in there. But I do think it's important to know that in advance to like manage your expectations that one booth is not meant to be a meal. It's meant to be a sample, a sampler size. So you could walk around and try things from several different countries and share, share items and just get a lot out of your day trying different things. So what I'm trying to say is I've still got room for more. Gotta say hi to the three caballeros topiaries. There are so, so many topiaries. They're all so beautiful. I wanna show you something really quick inside Disney Traders. Up here they've got this globe that looks like the globe from Illuminations. Who else misses Illuminations? I miss it. I'm not one to hang on to the past, but there was just something special about Illuminations, reflections of Earth. They also have a lot of the 2021 merch still out and still for sale. And here in Port of Entry, they've still got festival merch, Flower and Garden Festival merch that you can pick up. Stop and smell the flowers and the drinkware is 25% off. I bet whatever's left is going to continue to be discounted a little more. Wow, these are really cute though. Cool as can be. I like that, very cute. Oh, there we go, select flower and garden apparel, 25% off. As the festival sort of wraps up, of course, it's gonna be discounted. Live life in full bloom. I love that, Minnie. She is just living life. I love it. Oh, this is new to me, a pass holder sort of little section here. And there's a new-ish, or at least I haven't seen it, pass holder spirit jersey. Let's see what the back says. Can dig it. I can dig it. <gasps> Flower and Garden Festival 2021. This is really cute. The pass holder magic band. Maybe I did see these, but it was so long ago I don't remember. I'm not sure. Because this festival has been going on for months. And a lot has changed in that time. Like the world has changed. So. <sighs> One of my favorite beers that's here as part of the festival and you can't get it normally is the First Magnitude Brewing Company Honey Bee Citrus Blonde Ale that's out of Gainesville, so that's a local Florida beer. It's so delicious and I don't know anywhere you can get it. You, not that I know of anywhere at Disney World outside of this festival, so I'm gonna have one because I don't know when I'll be able to have that again. Bees and honey are such an important part of the world's ecosystem and Florida and there's all sorts of little displays here that talk about the different types of honey and where you can get them and where they come from basically in Florida which I love. So I have noticed today a lot of cast members with a little red badge on their tag that says earning my ears so that's normally for training so I was curious like did they just do like a big batch hire so I asked a cast member and I totally forgot that the college program is back it's back. Walt Disney World has not been the same without its college program cast members. It's such an important part of keeping the parks 
staffed up keeping training students and giving them an important you know college experience it's it's a great program i know a lot of people who have done it and it touches all of our lives so to everyone out there college program welcome back we're so happy to have you back in the parks and if you guys are in the parks and you see cast members who look kind of young and have the red earning my ears badge they're probably new college program members, so welcome them back and tell them that we've missed them. Now let us have our beer. It's got a little foam on top. It's spilled a little, but I'm not gonna say a word about it. I'm just gonna enjoy it. Mm, mm. It's so delicious. It's really light and you can taste the honey, but like in a like a refreshing, delicious way. It's, it's really good. So I'm gonna just walk with it because it's starting to sprinkle. Gonna walk with it. By the looks of those clouds, the sound of that thunder, and the lightning I see, oh my gosh, I can I can literally see it. Do you see over there? That is a rainstorm, and it is sweeping in fast. All right, let's go. Let's see what we can take cover. It's completely pouring, so I'm gonna ride Spaceship Earth and just wait out the rain just a little bit. Cause it is coming down out there, wow. My legs and my shoes got soaked just now. Please take small children by the hand and watch your step onto the moving platform. The platform in your time, the sliding doors on your time machine will close automatically. <laughs> in turn creates better record-keeping, fans, designs, and unfortunately taxis. But it also brings with it the dawn of great civilization. They create a simple, common alphabet, adaptable to most languages. Remember how easy it was to learn your ABCs? That's the definition. I'm doing this with no mask on, by the way, since the parks have reopened, so. Let's see if it actually saw me, though. And now I believe your future is just about ready. Let's see if it saw me or not. Welcome to the future. Or should I say, Oh, boy. You won't have to worry about your pets while you're gone, thanks to handy household robots. Hi! Oh, that looks great. You like great. No. The end, or should I say the beginning, of your future. We'll resume our journey shortly. Thank you.
This is what it looks like to see everybody's screens. It's interesting. So yeah, that was my first time riding Spaceship Earth, I think since the no mask and door rule went into effect. So that was my first time getting a little Spaceship Earth video with no mask on. And uh, yeah, it's just as kooky as ever. It'd be cool if they upgraded that technology or even just took that whole thing out. Your vehicle will begin moving immediately. Remain seated, please. Our travels are resuming now. Well, here's another cool thing. The Project Tomorrow area seems to be back and fully working. All the different stations and interactive things that were closed are all back open. It looks like all of them, everything's open. That is so cool to see. Uh, a few things are still roped off, but mostly everything's back open. I think that's a good place to wrap up today's video. So once again, I'd like to thank you all so much for being with me here through all of these adventures and all of the fun. And I'd also like to say that today, the uh, YouTube channel, Super Enthused, hit 70,000 subscribers. Wow, so thank you. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed. Thank you to everyone who watches, comments, likes, thumbs up the video, shares them with friends. Uh, when people ask, what's a good YouTube channel? sharing it it all helps so much i love the community we've built here i love how awesome you all are i love the like the enthusiasm the positivity just i, I feel the good vibes and i hope you do too and i thank you so so much so yeah i just wanted to like throw that out there as a little aside so with that there's a lot of fun coming up make sure you stay tuned if you're new here and you enjoyed this please subscribe to join in all the future fun a lot of exciting things coming up once again i thank you all so much for joining me i will see you for the next video and until then as always stay enthused bye